picture shop today. It is all about pictographs. Personally, one of my favorite type of graphs. The reason we're learning about pictographs is goes along with our unit of data and that we are showing the data can be collected, represented, and analyzed in order to answer questions. So today our essential question that we want to be able to answer by the end of today's session is how do we represent and interpret data on a pictograph? We've already added the vocabulary word key to our vocab organizer, but today we're going to add a new word, pictograph. And why are we learning all of this? Because our Common Core State Standards is saying a child in third grade, which is you, should be able to draw a picture graph and be able to use it to explain or analyze the information to answer questions. So let's look at today's graphs that we're learning all about pictographs. Pictographs, there are three down here, as you can see, use pictures instead of numbers to explain information. So in this first one, we have favorite pizza toppings. It looks like they chose cheese, mushroom, sausage, and pepperoni. And then they use slices of pizza to represent the people. Now the most important part of a pictograph is usually found here at the bottom, although it could be at the side or the top, and this is called the key. You need the key to unlock the information from the graph. So in this case, we see that a slice of pizza isn't just one regular old person. A slice of pizza actually equals five pizzas. So if we look up here for cheese, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 pizzas for favorite pizza toppings. Then over here in the middle we have our hours spent on homework each week and we look at our key to see that each circle equals two hours but hmm this one's a little different because look here we have a half a circle. What do you think that half a circle might represent? If you think it would be half of the two hours, you would be correct. And we know that half of two is one. So therefore, Bob has spent two, four, six, eight, plus one, nine hours on homework this week, where Stacy has spent two, four, plus one, five. Then over here, we have a little apple pictograph showing that each apple is worth 10 apples. And then, of course, we know that half of 10 is 5, so half of an apple would equal 5 apples. So here in February, we have 10, 20, 30, 40. And in March, we have 10, 20, and remember, 5, so 25 apples. Pictographs are easy because they use pictures rather than the numbers or bars or the line graphs that we've been using before. Remember, the most important part of the pictograph is always the key. So, take a minute now and record the following definition on your vocab organizer. Pictograph uses pictures instead of numbers to represent data. I'm going to give you two minutes to go ahead and record this on your organizer. Remember, on your organizer, it doesn't just have to have written definitions. You could also add some pictures that might help you remember what the word means. If you have the, your written definition already recorded, why don't you take a minute to sketch a pictograph? Remember, don't forget that key.
All right, time's up. As we move along, remember, if you didn't get a chance to finish your vocab organizer, you can always find our math vocabulary hanging on our math word wall in the classroom. So let's talk about our data. Here we have a scientist who counted the number of eggs that some animals had laid. The list above shows the scientist's data. We're going to use this data to make a pictograph. So you can see that a python, they laid 20 eggs, sea turtle 100 eggs, a frog 60 eggs, and a salamander 70 eggs. Since there are four animals, we will need four rows in our graph. First, we must give our graph a title. So we would put our title in here, and I'm going to name this one Animal Eggs, since that's what we're looking at. So now that we have that, let's see if we can find out what our next step would be. Now that we have our graph all laid out and we have a title, we're going to need to decide on a picture that would represent our data. Since an egg will be easy to draw, we could always use that. It would take forever to draw so many eggs though, so we need to make sure that we let each egg stand for more than one egg. What do you think would be a good number and why? Talk to your partner about this. Maybe you guys came up with the same thing that I was thinking. I thought, since I noticed up here all of my eggs are multiples of 10, that it would probably make sense for each of my eggs to represent 10. So I went ahead and added the key at the bottom that each of these little circle eggs would equal 10 eggs. So then I would go ahead and drag them over so I would have 10, 20, 30, Oops, too many there. So we'll take one and we'll put them down here. So if I put two here, then I know that my python now has 10, 20 eggs. And then in my sea turtle, that's going to be a lot. If I'm counting by tens, and I know each of my eggs is 10, then I'm going to need 10 tens to make the 100. So I would continue moving my eggs down here until I had the whole picture. So let's look at what that finished one would look like. Here is the type of animal eggs. And as you can see, we have our 10, 20 for our python, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So much easier than drawing 100 of those eggs. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So this picture using my key of 10 eggs made it much easier for me to graph the data and now has a nice picture to help me be able to analyze the data. So looking at our completed pictograph, which animal lays the most eggs? If you said sea turtle, you'd be correct. We can easily visualize all of the eggs and see that that one is the most. Which animal laid the fewest? That's easy too. The python only has two groups of the 10 eggs. How many more eggs does a sea turtle lay than a frog? If I'm trying to compare the data, I can see that the sea turtle and the frog are right here. So the sea turtle and the frog are the same up to these eggs, but then I notice the sea turtle has one, two, three, four more eggs. And I know that each of these eggs represent 10 eggs, so then I can say 10, 20, 30, 40. The sea turtle actually laid 40 more eggs than the frog. So now it's your turn. It's time to practice. You'll see in your math folder for this week's Math Skills Center that you have page C7, C8, and C9. C7 is all about making and interpreting a pictograph. So it gives you the data and you need to create the title and then you need to figure out what your key is going to represent. 
Remember down here, important information. When you create a key, you only use one picture to represent the data. You do not need to create different pictures for different things. That makes it very easy for your readers to read and understand the key. Once you've completed C7, you'll want to make sure and look back at your pictograph to help you answer these four questions. Finally, on page C9, you actually have a completed pictograph, and now you are trying to use the pictograph to answer the four questions. Remember to do your best. Always read the directions carefully. I know you can do it. When you're finished, be sure to get your exit ticket off the exit ticket table. Complete that, and then you can go ahead and put it in completed work. Great job on pictographs, and I can't wait to see your sports one.